So in January 1970, a few dozen movers and shakers of Nipigon met in St. Edwards to brainstorm the idea of a museum, or as Buzz Lines like to call it, the cultural complex for Nipigon. Ad hoc committees were organized, and by 1972, Dom Tower Woodlands moved their offices to Red Rock and donated their building on 2nd Street to be used as a museum. We used a winter works program and donated plywood from Multiply Plywood Mill, Nipigon, along with tempered glass from local auto glass store to build display cabinets. The people of Nipigon and surrounding communities brought in the artifacts. We opened in June 1973 with more artifacts arriving every day equaling about 3,000 donations the first year. Because of the diversity of Northwestern Ontario and the great distances then between museums, we undertook to represent a geographical area up to a 100 mile radius, more or less, of Nipigon. Okay, so it was your room yeah. at school that we oh, met yeah. in. Yeah, we met in. Well, uh, like I said at the uh, beginning, uh, Buzz Line was the, was the uh, catalyst to get all of this going and relentless in really what he was doing. I mean, he wouldn't say no for an answer, eh? And, yeah. And got, got people in twos because, I know he got me in twos and he got, oh, yeah. he got you in twos and he got Alvy in twos and... Uh, there was something for everybody to do. Yeah. 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 And that was, uh, well, we had no idea at that time that we were going to get one. We, we figured maybe five years or something like that. For, yeah. Messing around, and then boom, we got the building just like that. Yeah, yeah and then it was yeah. just a matter of trying to set up the rooms, uh, putting things in display that to keep them safe. I remember the old, uh, well, at the entrance of the museum, there was the old, we had cowbell. We, yeah, the old cowbell to come in, and then there was the. Uh, <laughs> it's around somewhere, I don't know where I haven't found it yet. That section, which we call the post office. Right. Which was sort of the. Right. Uh, the entrance to the old Domtar building right. where yeah, because you had to go through the secretary or whatever to, yeah. to keep going, yeah. Then that eventually got just removed, that one, because it was it was where, you know, you come in. It was a barricade when you came yeah. in. <laughs> and then there were the, uh, the back rooms, which had a lot of windows, which we eventually uh, uh, didn't really put that many artifacts in, but we had a, a, we called it a sitting room. We had oh yeah, the big yeah, the yeah, big sitting yeah, room. We, That's yeah. where, where these tried. I tried to replicate here. Yeah. Uh, as well, much as they could. Yeah, we yeah. had a table. We uh, and we had curtains. And yep, we bought this light table. Curtains, and uh, it was a, a very piano. comfortable place to uh, to have our oh, meetings yeah. and a comfortable place if you had other people came in uh, that you wanted to sit and talk with them. You could just sit. We had lots of room. Yeah, there's lots of room. It was a, uh, it was quite a large yeah, room. Yeah, it was a large room. Yeah. Yeah. Windows, windows, windows everywhere, you know, so you, you didn't have any walls to put stuff on. So that's why we had like the pianos, the organs, the table, the record player, <coughs> things like that. Yeah. Well, there were so many rooms downstairs, eh? You went from one room to another room, some of them had a door in between. And well, I guess that, that's basically when st things started to come in, we just tried to find a place to put it <laughs> and, uh, and try to keep them safe. Oh yeah, and in those days with our limit, the limited budget, it was very oh, definitely very difficult to to do anything that we did. Uh, in ahead. fact, I, you know, you look back at it, I I don't know how we really did it. We wrote grants. We had the Winterio <coughs> grants were there. We got them every year. We got mm -hmm. the Winter Works program. We got what's now, I guess, uh, Human Resources. Um, we wrote hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of grants that we wrote for that place. Um, all the town had to do was pay the electricity and they complained at that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, don't, I think at the very beginning, it, it, the, the administration wasn't really enthused about uh, a museum. In fact, I don't know if that, if that letter is still around. Oh, yes, it the is. The letter is still around, but it's a letter, they, they, they thought sure. that uh, the uh, acting uh, CEO, uh, or I guess uh, clerk treasurer in those days, said uh, he thought it was going to be an embarrassment to nip again. Well, I, I guess that that hasn't turned out to be uh, yeah. false. <laughs> <laughs> but 
we had the Ministry of Culture, Ollie Sawchuck, we had Jack Stokes on our side. Yeah. He got everybody that he could nail down on for the government to get us in, and then he fought for our money. We had to uh, exist for two years, according to the Ontario government uh, museums branch. You had to prove yourself a museum by being open, what was it, uh, 1,056 hours uh, a year or so many days, anyways, uh, and you did that for two years and then you got your startup operating grant of $5,000, which the town took, which Jack Stokes got back for us. Yeah, yeah. And then we, uh, on several occasions, we did a, a special grant to get uh, equipment and whatnot. Oh, and I remember always good, thought yeah. that, uh, she, she was kind of amazed that, that you and I could come up with a, a grant that she did not have to take apart. But she said, <laughs> you know, when it came down, oh. it was t we were to the penny, and you had to, you had to get estimates on everything, including postage or shipping, in your grants, and, and the cost of everything. And then that went in. And uh, uh, we were... I think we were the exception to the rule when they came down yeah. to it because a few times uh, Ollie had mentioned that, you know, the, the, we were pretty well on the top of the list when it came to uh, filling well, out yeah, grants. Because we used to find out about these grants with maybe two days or something that the town wouldn't tell us. Then when we did find out about it, the deadline was in two days. So we had to go around the town, get... Um, um, commitments of support for money. Okay, so we got that. Then you had to take that form that you filled out to the town, get them to stamp it, and then I drove it to Thunder Bay and got there 15 minutes before the Ministry of Culture closed and we got the grant. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got very good at writing grants. Yeah. All of us yeah, it was it was actually a really it was satis fun. it was, it was fun. after a while when you got the materials in it was very satisfying oh yeah that we, we knew we knew we could do it and yeah. Uh, yeah and we did that we did that even after with the fire I mean that was we had to do a lot of massive writing yeah. there yeah. for our supplies yeah. just to preserve our stuff store them in there mm. yeah. yeah yeah like going back to buzz he was uh he was really the, the the person who pushed to get everything, and uh, like no no problem was unsolvable when it came to to his idea. Because where he worked, I mean, if he wanted to do something, he just did it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, for us, if we wanted to do something, there were hoops that we had to go through, yeah. and and we would yeah. get shot down once in a while, but we would get up and... Yeah, it took him eight years to get the Beardmore relics, but we got the replicas. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> we got cease and desist orders. We had Jack Stokes going into the ROM. Oh, it was... Yeah. Uh, I went down there and, and tried to find them, and they said, oh, they're locked up in the basement somewhere. You know? So, uh, yeah, we drove them crazy, and then they... Now they say, if you want to know anything about the Beardmore relics, you visit Nipigon Museum, the blog. Is because, that right? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, good. <laughs> they are right on the ROMM website. <laughs> That's where they send everybody that wants to know about the Beardmore relics. Yeah. And I had a guy drive all the way from California here to oh, see it. Good. Because he knew he couldn't see them in Toronto, but he could get them up close and personal here. <clears throat> Amazing stuff. It, it, it was yeah. fun. It was sometimes it was very oh. uh, <laughs> depressing, but uh, a lot of times, you know, when you get the people coming in and you get, yeah. you, you see what you've done, it, it gave you a great satisfaction. Up and too. down, up and down. This this is the way your emotions went. You know, right right through even till now. You yeah. know, even till now. Yeah. He it was just it got to be a little bit beyond whatever there the fourteen years of of the cold storage but yeah but we certainly enjoyed setting up our displays there that's yeah. where Elvie Elvie was <laughs> doing yeah. stuff yeah. of course Buzz could nail her at work <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah setting up the displays and, and then walk 
standing back and, and looking at them. Yeah, it was great. And then we managed to get some local carpenters to oh, yeah. to make some of our cases. And, and and each time we did that, we got the glass put in. You know, it, there we accomplished something else. And then you know, got the locks. Yeah. Uh, for the cases and and whatnot. Yeah. Those. Yeah, I always remember. Okay, locks and cases, when uh, someone uh, had stolen the keys, oh. <laughs> and I, I happened to have a student in in my class. Her father was uh, the RCMP in Nipigon, and I had just mentioned to the kids that I don't know if we came down here maybe for a tour or something, but told them that the keys were were lost and we couldn't get into the cabinets. And this little girl comes up to me and she says, "You know, my dad can can get into these locks." Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So anyways, I made contact with him and uh, brought him to the museum. Uh, he asked me to stand by the door and not to follow him. <laughs> and all of a sudden, in about five minutes, all the locks were <laughs> unlocked. <laughs> so we could get back into the cabinets uh, now. <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> it was, you know, it... it we had so many people helping us. If we needed oh, help it. to that do something, it was there. Yeah, you know? and we had, well, we used to do for those those things. Every year we had a celebration about somebody, and one was we celebrated the, the people of Nipigon because they're the ones that put the stuff into the museum. We're the ones that look after it and make sure it's safe and, and retell its story. But all this stuff come from donations. Yeah, I don't think we've put out any money to, to buy any artifact. No, after the fire I bought some pretty rocks. But well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but basically but, everything yeah. is, it was donated. But other than that, yeah, we, I mean, they're amazing, amazing stuff that we've got. And, and our display, the displays that LV and I set up, the, that uh, guy from the Dearborn, the Henry Ford Museum that Jack Stokes brought up that time. He was quite impressed with our displays. Oh, yeah. <coughs> well, we followed the rules. I mean, we had the books that showed how we're supposed to do it. No, no tape or pins or <laughs> whatever. Band aids, anything that would stick. That's what some of the guys would put the things up with. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah it's. Uh... But. We had a room for everything. Yeah, we had a room for rocks. We had a room for bottles. That's what I'm short of here. I have a case. You have you a know, case. <laughs> so you, now you have another way of having to display the stuff. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. Yeah. But like that, our Nipigan Nipigan room is now one case. Uh, yeah. Well, we had dedicated a room to a Buzz Lion, or two rooms. It was yeah. the, uh, the yeah. Uh, archaeology. Yeah. Yeah, the the element, archaeology the lion, one, too. Uh, yeah. Archaeology. Yeah, archaeology Lion's room. Den, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think he was really pleased when, when, when that happened. Eh? But he kept kept on bringing in stuff and finding stuff. And, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I've got them downstairs, like in, the, in those uh, Mastercraft drawers. Mm-hmm all those little thousands of artifacts in there. So they're all set out that you just pull out a drawer and look at them like that. Well, Elvi, you got to get your two cents worth in here. <laughs> or five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Your memories? Don't have any. Oh, from work. I worked in the building. <laughs> yeah. That's right, you did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, upstairs was our, our storage and I had an office for Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I the was the curator, director, and for until basically until it burnt, you know. So yeah, I had my and, and then you went through the study. Yes, I went through the study. And the guys then around. they canned the study, so it, you know, it wasn't worth the hassle for all of us to put up with the shenanigans for the next fourteen years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I found that a, a difficult time because. Uh, Usually when I take on a project or something, I, I like to get it yeah. going and, and get it complete, but... Um, oh, and remember when you had your class sewing those bonnets? <laughs> <laughs> still got some of those bonnets around. Is that right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, we used to do different things, yeah. Well, well they knew that I was interested in the museum, so... And that was yeah, the school classes came down 
can't get them here. Very rare. Hmm. They aren't coming. They go out and pick garbage. They won't come in the museum. Well, maybe with a little bit of prodding and, and uh, it's it's marketing. And yeah. that's really what yeah, what, it's what, marketing, what you have, yeah. What you have to do. I mean this this our this little thing here, our welcome to the museum. I mean we we spent a lot of time and, and I guess a lot of money, but this was part of our advertising. Yeah. And uh, Yeah, so that's where you got the the Beardmore relics, you got the tramway, you've got uh pretty well everything that we had in there sort of in the timeline yeah. running. And I think well like we were so happy when we were able to get this published. Oh yeah. yeah. And Hind we got a lot of them done too. Yeah. So. Hindsight mm -hmm. now I, I look at this and the first thing I see, hmm, paper like this. I could redo this with local and local advertising and whatnot that we could get it published again. <laughs> yeah, because there is no no advertising in this at no, all. No, there's no, no advertising all. at all, but it, it could be done and, and sponsored by the, the yeah, community. Yeah, do it a different way. Yeah, yeah. Well, Rob Rob wants to do the, uh, get all the, the photographs digitized, digitized, mm -hmm. because he's been trying to find them and he's, you know, it's been so long going through them this way or going through the index and then trying to locate them. Mm -hmm. And then there's small ones and big ones and they're in different mm -hmm. places, so, yeah. yeah. So I said, okay, you're going to do that. Well, then your end product's going to be a book or booklets or whatever of, yeah. of our, yeah. mm. and have two people for a year. Yeah, none I, of yeah. this trying to do it in a couple months. Yeah, I, when I when you mention photographs, I, I just I just think of the the, the pile of them that we oh. had in that my house after the fire, and, and lucky they were packed so tight that they didn't. Yeah. most of them didn't burn, but no. they had that no. particular smell to them that we couldn't just couldn't get out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, mm -hmm. you know, really, uh, you know, if I can put a feather in, in, in Betty's cap, you know, without you, I mean, this building as it is right now would not be here. I'll tell you that right now. No, it was, uh, uh, mm -hmm. After I sort of uh, stepped aside and, and didn't really get, uh, you know, sort of stepped aside, not really being aggressively involved in the museum, uh, you're the person yeah. who actually well, soldiered on and uh, this museum basically is would not be here if it wasn't for you and, and people a, recognize that. It was a big battle. Oh yeah. And, you know I had my hysterics but that was before I mean you know when you they said you know especially when you're told that you could get a hundred percent grant to cover the building of the new place and you couldn't even get a smile out of the township that's all they needed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's water under the bridge, but but you have to oh, yeah. take a look at what you have. So we in got here. it. We got it on our own because they kept changing the grants. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, first yeah. of all, they would support it. Then, by the time you know, after a few years, nope, they don't do that anymore. They split them all up instead of having. Well, instead of having a variety, they put them all together, and you could only go to one place. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. It's not something I'd want to do again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't think I'd have time to it. Yeah. Anyway. Well, basically, it was a trial by fire. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs>